are these people? In other news, Colin, how long do you think we've been in Ukraine for? How long do you think we've been meddling around in that region of the world? Well, you can make the argument. Well, obviously, I'm seeing the title. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that that does help. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but imperialist slash imperialist nations usually, as history serves, often have a much longer term of dealing with these countries in a way than what we usually it, 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 like. The fact that we're kind of at well, Ukraine is at war with Russia now. It shouldn't be a surprise, just given history. Yeah. Uh, if they don't just happen in a vacuum, it just does not just happen. So, but yeah, I'm sure you got some history for us that people do not know about. Yep, you will learn today. Um, so, Joe Loria, oh. in Consortium News, uh, writes, using Ukraine since 1948, the U.S. has staged operations with extremists from Ukraine to undermine Russia for nearly eight decades. It's led us to the doorstep of nuclear annihilation. Joe, what do you what do you mean, Joe? Well, Joe tells us the United States has for nearly 80 years seen Ukraine as the staging ground for its once covert and increasingly overt war with Russia. After years of warnings and after talks since 2008 of Ukraine joining NATO, Russia fought back two years ago with neither side backing down. Ukraine is increasingly becoming a flashpoint that could lead to nuclear war. The West thinks Russia is bluffing. But its doctrine states that if Russia feels its existence is threatened, it could resort to nuclear arms. Instead of taking these warnings seriously, NATO is recklessly opening corridors for a ground war against Russia and Ukraine. France says it's putting together a coalition of nations to enter the war. Despite Russia saying French or any other NATO force would be fair game. In Paris the other day, Joe Biden said Russia wants to conquer all of Europe, but can't even take Kharkiv. If this kind of inflammatory nonsense combined with allowing Ukraine to fire NATO weapons into Russian territory, that is imperiling us all. The danger started building up many years ago, but is now reaching a climax. The U.S. relationship with Ukraine and its extremists to undermine Russia. Where's that coming from? Sorry. Um, to undermine oh, Russia began after the Second World War. During the war, units of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, OUN-B, took part in the Holocaust, killing at least 100,000 Jews and Poles. Mikhail Lebed, a top aide to Stephen Stepan Bandera, the leader of the fascist OUN-B, was recruited by the CIA after the war, according to a 2010 study by the U.S. National Archive. Lebed was the foreign minister of a Banderite government in exile, but he later broke with Bandera for acting as a dictator. The U.S. Army Counterintelligence Corps termed Bandera, quote, extremely dangerous. It said he was looked upon as the spiritual and national hero of all Ukrainians. Instead of Bandera, the CIA was interested in Lebed. Despite his fascist background, they set him up in the office in New York City, from which he directed sabotage and prop propaganda operations on the agency's behalf inside Ukraine against the Soviet Union. So here it is. Here's the documents of Alan Duels asking U.S. immigration to allow Lebed re-entry to U.S. despite a murder conviction. Okay, so the U.S. government study says, CIA operations with these Ukrainians began in 1948 under the cryptonym Cartel, soon changed to Aerodynamic. Lebed relocated to New York and acquired permanent residence status, then U.S. citizenship. It kept him safe from assassination, allowed him to speak to Ukrainian emerge groups, and permitted him to return to the United States after operational trip to Europe. Once in the United States, Lebed was the CIA's chief contact for aerodynamic. CIA handlers pointed to his cunning character, his relationship with the Gestapo and Gestapo training, and the fact that he was a very ruthless operator. The CIA worked with Lebed on sabotage and pro-Ukrainian nationalist propaganda operations inside Ukraine until Ukraine's independence in 1991. This kind of historical context analysis, please donate to Consortium News. 
for their spring fund drive, which I've actually linked Consortium News' donation drive link in our description below. We use them a lot here on INN. Keep it work. So <laughs> please go support them as well if you can. But Colin, any thoughts? That was the thought sound in your head. Ding! <laughs> I mean, again, it's just the idea of like we meddle with other countries for political and I would argue financial interests, and often it happens over the course of several years, and then something happens that the other country is like, you fuck around, you find out, and then we're just kind of like, oh my god, like attack, like all this stuff is, you know, like all that yeah. bullshit. So. You know, I, I think to be fair, I well to be fair, like mm -hmm. um, Aaron and I feel like I remember Aaron and Max from the race on kind of talking about this. Yeah, like giving kind of like the history way back, like about a couple of years ago now, but you know, obviously, you know, Max and Aaron are like. Russia gators and shitheads and whatever. Yeah, but anti again, Semitic. <laughs> right. But again, given history, you know, there's always nothing just happens in a vacuum and nothing just happens just like in seconds. Like, yeah. Usually stuff like this is happens over the course of years, in certain cases, centuries before things pop off. So, it's not surprising that we've had dealings with Ukraine really, shit, as long as Israel at this point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right after like, World War II. This is, what this is right. is like Nazi scientist stuff, right? It's like we bring mm -hmm. them here, they build our whole organization to go to the moon. Like, that's all, you know, Werner von Braun and all that jazz, you know? Like, we let the Russians spend countless gallons of blood for us. You know, we steal as many scientists as we can and run off with the goods. You know, and then we compete with them for, like, four decades. So, right. like, space racing and whatnot, and trying to economically sanction them, and so on and so forth, which we are continuing to do. Right? But, uh, you know, this yeah. is more of this kind of, like, uh, cloak and dagger subterfuge stuff that no one really knows unless you read all the fine print, you know. So it's you know, no one knows this kind of stuff, no one knows about the coup nine years ago or the bombing of the Donbass or any of that stuff. And you bring it up, they call you conspiracy theory. So, you know, uh, this is this is what happens when people tell the truth anymore. You know, so it's it's <laughs> why YouTube has demonetized us. So if you want to donate to us as well as consortium, you can do that at codashv.com slash indie news networks in the QR code on your screen. Or if you're in that live chat, press exclamation mark donate so you can super chat that way. Um, if you can't give monetarily, we get it. Times are tight. Um, just like and subscribe. Hit the share button. Leave comments. I think that actually does help us. Um, as much as YouTube likes to suppress us, doing these things hopefully helps fight back against that system. So, you know, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Help us get 2K. Otherwise, thanks for watching.